Last night, our Jewish brothers and sisters gathered for the first night of Passover. Together with family and friends, they shared in ancient rituals designed to take the celebrants through the Exodus story from slavery to freedom. After a Kaddish blessing marking the holiness of the day, the lighting of the candles, the ritual washing of hands, they eat parsley dipped in salt water, combining the hopefulness of spring with the tears of slavery. The bread is broken as they remember the brokenness that slavery represents. Children at the meal would certainly notice that these rituals are different from their typical Sabbath meal. And so the Passover celebration continues with something called the Ma Nishtana, the four questions. The youngest child at the table is prompted to ask, why is this night different from all other nights? Why do we eat only matzah and bitter herbs? Why do we eat this night reclining rather than sitting straight up? The adults around the table then tell the story of the exodus from Egypt. How the Jewish people had to eat unleavened bread because they needed to get out of town quickly. They didn't have time for the bread to rise. We eat bitter herbs to remind us of the bitterness of slavery, they say. We recline because in ancient times only a free person would be able to recline at the table. Slaves had to stand. So we recline to remember that God liberated us. God made us free. In these stories and these rituals, they shape the people as they experience yet again the formation of God's people through the waters of the sea. It's a beautiful ritual, these questions one that is unabashedly designed to keep a child's attention through the telling of the story. But these questions are asked even if there are no children present, even if the only two people in the room are two Jewish scholars who surely know all the answers and then some, still the questions are asked. Why is this night different? from all other nights. It does appear that some version of the Manishtana was happening during the time of Jesus. And so I imagine Jesus with his disciples. They say a blessing. They light the candles. They recline to eat the meal, and one of those disciples is tasked with asking that question, the one that gets the liberation story started. Why is this night different from all other nights? Could they have known how significant that question would become? Surely they are aware of the growing darkness, the increasing danger, the intensity that is building in the city as more and more Roman soldiers arrive to keep order. And Jesus' teaching about the kingdom is heard increasingly as a political challenge. Jesus had told them repeatedly that the Son of Man would be crucified, that he would be buried, but they'd push back, told him, no, this must not happen to you. And they made sure that a normal, regular Passover meal was prepared in the place where Jesus told them, where the script would be followed and God's powerful acts of liberation would be proclaimed. And yet the question 
is asked and hangs in the air. Why is this night different from all other nights? They think they know the answer. They know about unleavened bread. They know about the sacrificed lamb. They've done this every year for their entire lives. But this night is different. Jesus is different. At the time of the ritual washing, the Gospel of John tells us, he bends down and washes their feet. It's a new commandment, he says, to love one another. Why, Lord? Why is this night different? Jesus goes off script. One of you will betray me. One of you will deny me. All of you will desert me. And there it is. All their sins laid out before them. Surely not I, Lord. Why, God, why is this night different? He takes the bread and breaks it and blesses it. And he takes the cup and gives thanks. And they must have thought with relief, oh good, we know how this part goes. This blessing of the bread and wine is part of the Passover night. This is familiar and safe. And then those words, take, eat, this is my body. Drink, all of you, this is my blood poured out for forgiveness of sins. Why, why, Jesus, is this night different? Can't we just keep doing what we know? Can't we just have a cozy and comforting meal with our friends? Say the familiar words and be reassured by the familiar answers. We gather on this Maundy Thursday, and in so many ways, it's just another night, not different at all. Our hands and our feet are dirty, like they are at the end of any other day. This week, just like any other week, we've made messes and waged stupid wars and clumsily projected imperfect representations of Jesus onto the world. We see terror and violence in Ukraine and hand-wringing over the economy and accusations hurled across political lines. We know it's Holy Week, but in truth, it hasn't always felt very holy. And yet, this night is different. Our sins are laid out before us as we confess and forgive. Our feet are washed as we hear words of love. Our meal is set before us as we taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Why? Well, in the words of one theologian, the point of our liturgy is doing the world the way the world was meant to be done. Here, on this night, we bring all our questions, all of our mess, all of our hunger, and we hear and we see, but most of all, we do. We come forward and we feel hands laid upon us as those words of forgiveness from Christ himself are spoken. We remove our shoes and wash our feet as a sign of service and communion and love for one another as Christ has loved us. And we share the broken bread and outpoured wine. And we do this in remembrance of that night 
that was so very different. We do these things that Christ commanded, and as we do so, we learn once more how the world was meant to be done. Our service in the world, our love for one another, our communion with Christ's death and resurrection in the Lord's Supper, these will shape us. Through these things, we are formed as God's people. Through these things, Christ teaches us what God's kingdom is all about. Through these things, Christ truly comes among us and gets inside of us. Through these things, Christ takes what is unholy and broken and flawed and tells us that those things will not have the final word. Through these things, we experience a God who makes all things new. In this way, the night maybe turns out to be not so different, after all. Even as the comfort and familiarity of our gathering is shaken up, as the altar is stripped and darkness descends upon us, even as Jesus stood up from the table and led his disciples to the Mount of Olives and Gethsemane and Golgotha, there is a love that goes beyond the end and does not let us go. In this unfolding twilight scene, so different from other nights, when bonds are broken and it looks like all is lost, it is only this love that will hold. Why is this night different from all other nights? The disciples won't really know until they meet Jesus on the other side of death and all is resurrection. But we're not there yet. After all, Good Friday is just around the corner. And so tonight, we sit and let Jesus wash our feet. We receive the bread and drink the wine. We tell the story. And we remember the God who loves and liberates us. Amen. Amen.